And so it means to remain somewhere, to stay in something, to seep in something, to let it just steep, to let you take something in. But the reason I put active at the bottom there is because there are different forms of this word throughout the Bible, throughout the New Testament. And this specific one that's used here, the form is active. You guys are probably like, I have no idea what you're talking about. That's okay, I barely do too. So we're all right, we're on the, we're on the same page. Um, but active, what that means is that when you remain, when you stay, when you reside, when you abide, that means you are actively doing it. You're not just passively letting something come to you. You're not just like sitting there and letting it come in and like you're not just taking it in. But instead, you are actively pursuing something and you are actively putting your life in the context of something else. And so we are talking about abide in Christ. So you are actively putting yourself in the context with Christ. You get, we get to participate with Christ because of his work on the cross. And that looks different for us now. If you're a Christian in this room, that looks, this is what it will look like. That's what we're going to be talking about is what it looks like to abide. And so today when we look through verses 1 through 11, we are going to be seeing what it looks like to pursue Christ to live for him fully, and to give evidence that we are living for him. And so what we're going to do is this, we, this is a pretty long passage. It's, I want to read through the whole thing, so bear with me. It'll be up on the screens. We're going to read through it all, and then we're going to break it down, okay? So take a look up at the screen. We're going to be reading verses 1 through 11. It says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit. Bear fruit. You get it? You see my shirt now? You understand? Oh, look at that. Wow. Oh. I, I, I actually lost. <laughs> bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. We'll keep going on the next slide. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things I've spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. So there's a lot. There's a lot there that we're going to kind of dig through, but there's going to be a lot of, like, metaphorical language. So all those people that like plants, you see all that vine and branches stuff? This is like yours, all right? This is for you. So we got to kind of define all the different parts. So the first thing is somebody is a vine dresser. So this is somebody that takes care of a plant. They, they take care of the, the branches. They will take care of the stem. They will make sure everything looks good, that it's healthy, and that nothing is killing it. And so in this instance, the vine dresser is God himself. And so then there's the vine, which is Christ. And then there are things attached to the vine. There are branches, and we are the branches. I mean, it literally says that in, in verse 5, that I am the vine, you are the branches. And so today, as we all sit here as fellow branches, we're going to talk about what it looks like to be a healthy branch. We're going to look like what it looks like to be a healthy branch. And so there's a few different aspects of what this, of what this is, but the first thing is that a healthy branch will rely on the vine to bear fruit. It will rely on the vine to bear fruit. And so... Like I said, we're going to be breaking down a few of these passages, so I'm going to throw the, we're going to throw this back up on the screen, the first six verses. It says, I am the vine, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch of me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. So all these things that we're seeing so far are different aspects of what it looks like to take care of this plant. But keep looking with me. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides, abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. So now we're looking at a direct comparison. We're seeing where the metaphor is kind of coming together. And whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit for apart from me you can do nothing. 
So there's a few things I want, to, I want you to see here. And the first thing is at the very beginning, it says, I am the true vine. So the people that were reading this at the time would have thought, heard the vine, and they would have assumed the nation of Israel. So at the time, in the Old Testament, in Isaiah 5, actually, it talks about that Israel is the vine, meaning Israel is the way to God. Israel is the way to get to the vine dresser. But now, because of Christ's work and because of Christ's promise to us, the way that we can access God is through Christ. So it's no longer about Israel. It's no longer about being part of a nation. But instead, it is now through access to God through Christ, through his work on the cross. He is the one that is able to bring us to God. And that's why he is the true vine. That's why Christ is the true vine. And he's pointing to his father as the vine dresser. And so God, as the vine dresser then, he does two things here. He will either cut off branches or he will prune branches. So what that means is, so if we're branches, people in the church, people that are following Christ, people that should be abiding in Christ, abiding in the vine, are the branches. There are some that will be cut off and thrown away, and there are some that will be pruned. So those that are cut off, those are the people in the community, those are the people in the church, the people that say that they're abiding in Christ, when in reality they're not. People that are part of that community, but they're actually doing more damage to Christ's name, to the church, whatever that may be. God is going to remove that danger from the body, from the church, to make sure that the vine is healthy. They're ultimately going to do more harm to the body of Christ, to the church, than they would help it. And so the same way that a vine dresser would take bad branches and throw the, cut them off and throw them away, God is going to make sure that his vine is healthy. You might think, wow, that's kind of brutal. Like, God, like, what are you, what's, what's God doing in this scenario? And the thing is, God is a just God. And he is, he is going to make sure that his kingdom is glorifying to him and that it's not sinful. So if people aren't choosing him, if they're not abiding in him, he can't be with those people. And so he is just, and he's faithful to what he says he's going to do. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in a sec. But then he prunes the good ones. Does, has anybody ever heard of that before, pruning something? All right, nice. Okay, a few of you. All right. So pruning basically means when it comes to fruit, when it comes to plants, is taking care of a branch to make sure that it's healthy, like trimming off some of like the excess stuff, making sure like leaves are out of the way, making sure that it's healthy. So it's... The words here, the Greek words that are used here are very similar to one another, but it's specific. So this branches that are cut off are thrown away, but pruned br branches are the ones that are taken care of. And it is ultimately so that pruned branches can bear fruit. Okay, nice. Yeah, so they can bear fruit. I was waiting so long to wear this shirt. I'm not going to lie. So I was, I was keeping it in my closet waiting for it, all right? But... Bear, we are supposed to bear fruit. So what does that mean if we're all branches, if we're Christians? What is fruit? So Galatians talks about the fruit of the Spirit. There's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. I think that's all of them. Did I miss any? Gentleness. Gentleness. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so, I'm so proud of you guys. Uh, yeah, there is a song. There is a song. But those are some things that are considered the fruit of the Spirit. But also, it could just mean Christ's likeness. So when you are bearing fruit, that means that you are a branch that, ha that is showing something healthy. You have something healthy. You are living a lifestyle that points back to Christ. And you are pointing back to Christ in everything you do. See, effectiveness comes with constantly looking to God. Growth comes with constantly looking to God. So there's a theologian, his name is Charles Spurgeon. He was alive a long time ago. And he was an extremely faithful man, and he has an amazing story. I would encourage you to look, up, look into it if you're ever curious. But there's a story about him at one point walking down the street with a friend, and they're walking down the street to go to church, and then all of a sudden, Charles Spurgeon just falls to the ground. And his, and his buddy that's with him is like, what, what's wrong? Like, are you okay? And what he says, to this effect, he says it a little bit more fancy, but I'm going to translate a little bit for you guys. So. He's basically like, I felt disconnected with God. 
There was a sin that popped in my head. There was a sinful thought that popped in my head, and it immediately made me disconnect with God, and I need to pray. I can't be disconnected with God. I need to pray. And that's what it means to abide. He's showing his fruit because he's going to prayer. His, his fruit is visible. But ultimately, he w- abides in God because he constantly looks to him. He doesn't want to be separated with, from him. And when following Christ, you're ultimately going to bear fruit. Because when you choose him over everything else, when you choose him when you don't want to, that's what it looks like to abide in the vine. That's what it looks like to abide in Christ. If you abide in Christ in the midst of hard moments, in the midst of hard decisions, you are a healthy branch. All right? The next thing is that the branch isn't separate from the vine. The branch isn't separate from the vine. It cannot be separate. So this is, this is a little bit what we're talking about, about some of those branches that get cut off and they're thrown away. So take a look up at the screen. It says, if anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. So it's like, dang, like, so you're saying I'm a branch and I might be thrown into fire by God. Like, what does that mean? So we talked a little bit about that. But the branch that does not come to the vine is not ultimately able to bear fruit. So if a, if a branch isn't fully connected to a vine on a plant, there's no life. It can't survive. It might survive a little bit. It might survive for a short amount of time. But there's nothing that's feeding it. There's nothing that's giving it life. And so if we think of ourselves in respect to a branch... If we are not following Christ, if we're not abiding in Christ, if we are not bearing fruit, if we're not showing the fruit, our Christ-likeness, what does that say about us? What does that say about your abiding in Christ? And see, this isn't about what it looks like to be saved. Like, this isn't about a process to have salvation or what that looks like. This is after people that have come to faith. Like, so the question is, not, it's not anymore like, are you saved or not? It's, well, it is, but it's not so much like, have you come to faith? But it is, are you living a life that is abiding in Christ? Are you living a life that is glorifying to him? Because if you are not, if you are not showing that fruit, if you're not healthy, if you are not living, what that means is that he's going to cut you off from the tree and you're going to get bundled up and you're going to get thrown into the fire. You're ultimately going to go to hell. I mean, I, that's just as explicit as I can be. I want you to see that if you don't bear fruit, if you don't abide in Christ, if you say that you have come to saving faith and that you are following Christ, but you're not showing any fruit, take a hard look at what your life looks like. This is like people that come to gather on Sundays and they worship and they raise their hands and they come and they take notes and they have good table discussions and then for the other six days of the week, life looks completely different. Life looks completely different. See, this is a call to abide. This is a call to abide to constantly be in the word, to constantly be in prayer, to live a life that's glorifying to God. This is not a call to just be good whenever you can be, or it's not a call to like just, you know, like every once in a while, but it's a call to be better. Now hear me when I say this. This isn't a call to perfection. Not yet, at least. One day we will be perfect and we will be glorified with Christ, but that's not right now. We're going to slip up. We're going to mess up. There's going to be mistakes. But that's exactly where they have to end, is their mistakes. They're not a lifestyle. This isn't the life you're living. You slip up. It happens. There's forgiveness for that. There's forgiveness through Christ for that. I was trying to think of, like, a specific instance in my life where I could see this reflected. And honestly, it was most of my time in middle school and early high school. Like, I think about my time in late middle school when I was, like, going to church because my parents wanted me to, and I'd go on Sunday mornings, I'd be fine, I'd go home, and my life would be completely different. The language I was using, the friends I was picking, what I was choosing to do on a daily basis, 
was not God glorifying. Then fast forward a couple years to high school. I started going to church because I wanted people to look at me and be like, man, that guy's got fruit. Like, look at him. But I was not abiding in Christ. I was abiding in myself, if anything. I was looking at myself. What, is, where, what fruit can I give myself? How can I make myself look more righteous? What face can I put on to hide whatever pain that I'm struggling with right now? Ultimately, it was even like, I was going to church and I was on my student leadership team because there were girls that I liked. I mean, if I'm being real, I was not going because I wanted to abide in Christ. I was going because I wanted to abide in myself. And honestly, I might as well have been gathered and thrown in the fire. This is a call to be better because if we're not abiding in Christ, I'm telling you right now, that's what the future is. That's what it looks like. This isn't speculation. This is something that Christ has shown us. And he wants us to come to him, to abide in him. And that's why the next thing is that the branch is just as healthy as the vine. All right, I'm going to get a little bit, give a little bit of levity here. We had to get through the tough stuff, but a little bit of levity. Look at verses 7 and 8. They're going to be on the screen. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. All right, so the big thing, everything that I see, every time I look at this passage, the thing that I see is ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. That's like, dang, like, this is like a free pass, you know? Like I get to get, ask God for whatever I want. That's a big deal. And it's true to an extent. See, there's specific wording here. All right, so look at the beginning there. If you abide in me, so you're choosing to follow Christ, you're choosing to go to him when everything gets difficult, when life gets difficult, when you don't want to go to him, you're choosing to go to him. And then my word abides in you, meaning that you're digging into the Bible, you're, you're praying, you are telling others the truth of the gospel. When those two things happen, when you have those two things, then ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Because if you're truly abiding in Christ, if you truly have life in you, if you truly have his word in you, the things that you're going to be requesting are going to always point back to God. There's not going to be an instance where you're going to ask for something that is not God glorifying if that is how you are living your life, if you are abiding in him. And see, this is encouraging because the determiner of our faith is not what we do. The determiner of our faith is because Christ gave his life for us so that we can be with him for eternity, so that we don't have to be bundled up and thrown in the fire. And then there's evidence for that faith in the fruit that we bear, in the life that we have. That's glorifying to him. And so that's doing all of the stuff that we've talked about for the past few weeks in Alan's series, leveraging your social media for Christ. Whatever your passion is, whatever your drive is, leveraging that for Christ, leveraging your daily conversations for him because you can't help but abide in him and point others back to him, point people to him. It's leveraging your daily actions for him. See, as a branch, your health comes from the vine that you are abiding in. And ultimately, your fruit is going to come because of the life that that vine has given you. That's because the, the branch naturally bears fruit from the vine. The branch naturally bears fruit from the vine. It is inevitable if you are truly abiding in Christ to bear fruit. Look at verses 9 through 11. They're going to be up on the screen. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and your joy may be full. Look at this. Because God loves his Son, because God loves Christ, if we abide in Christ's love, we get the love of the vine dresser. If we keep God's commands, 
then we get to abide in that love. We get to be a part of that love. And ultimately, when we abide in that love, we get the joy that Christ has. And our joy will be full. I'm going to tell you right now, that's a guarantee. That's a promise. Your joy will be full. And you'll experience a love that could only come from the Father. That can only come from God because of Christ. Because he is the vine. And he's the true vine. So ultimately, this passage is a call. This is a call for us. This is a call to start something. And there are really three main things that I want you to see. And ultimately, you will be in one of these three. And the first call is a call to abide. I've said that word probably a hundred times. We're going to hear a hundred times more for the next three weeks. But when you abide, what that is calling you to do is to go to Christ. To let yourself as a, as a branch be connected fully to that vine. To get your life from him. To go to him. And there's some of you in this room that probably have never chosen to abide. That have, not, that have said, I don't know what that means. I don't know what it looks like to follow Christ. And I want to tell you right now that Christ gave his life so that we could have life. That we could have life and abide in him. And if you're not there, if that's not where you're at, talk to a leader tonight. Talk to a leader tonight. But maybe, maybe you have said that you're abiding. So then the next call would be one that is to obedience. Obedience. So you might say you're abiding. And you might say that you're, you're the branch that's attached to that vine. But where is your fruit? Are you bearing fruit? Can you show me, can you show me that you're a disciple of Christ? What fruit do you have? And I want you to seriously take a look. Because if you are truly abiding, you will be able to prove it with what, got, with what God is doing through you. Because remember, this life, the, the fruit that you bear, is not because of life that you provide, but it's because of you are abiding in him. So what evidence do you have that you're a disciple how can you show me, like it says in the, in the passage, that you are uh, one of his disciples? Last thing, maybe you are in obedience, but is it joyful obedience? How, how excited are you to obey God? How excited are you to abide in the vine? How excited are you? Does it just give you overwhelming joy to think that you are abiding in Christ? Or maybe you're not there yet. And that's okay. If you are not at one of these spots, that's okay. Because when a, when a branch grows, fruit do, don't just, doesn't just pop up there. Right? It grows. It becomes something. You might be a branch that's just hanging on, just barely. But you can come back to life. You can abide in him. So we're going to go into table discussions. And some of these questions might get a little bit more personal or you might have to be a little bit more vulnerable. I'm going to encourage you to do that at your table. So break off into tables and I will bring us back together to worship again in a few minutes. So go ahead and break off of these tables and talk about some of these questions. So I hope you guys had good conversations. I hope they were honest. I hope uh, you had an opportunity to kind of talk where you're at. I'm going to invite the band to come back up um, and... Uh, we are going to continue in worship for the night. And you guys could go ahead and make your way back to the middle. Let's go make your way back to the middle. So we are going to sing. We're going to sing a song uh, called Oceans that some of you might know. And when we sing this song, when we sing this song, I want you to go into this song with a heart of obedience. I want you to go into this song with a heart of joyful obedience. That in the moments when things get tough, when it gets hard, that your eyes will point to him. That wherever you go, whatever you are thinking, whatever you want, that you abide in him. And that you choose him in those difficult moments. So go into this song with a heart of obedience, obeying the commands that God has given us, what he has called us to do. So let me pray for you guys. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for... 
um, allowing us to go in and to see what it looks like to abide in your son, to rest, to live there, to take him in. And ultimately, that he gives us life so that we can bear fruit, so that we can look more like you. And so, Lord, in all that we do and all that we say, and as we worship you, let us worship with a heart of obedience that remembers your son and his work on the cross for us. In your name I pray. Amen.